what's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to be looking at the numeric type integer in rust so to begin with let's go ahead and create a new file in our source folder and we'll say integer types like so dot rs and i'm just going to go ahead and create a function called run and this is where we'll just keep it all rather than keeping with rather than going back and forth with the main dot rs file so let's have a look at what kind of integers are available to us. So like with floats, we had 32-bit and 64-bit. With integers, we have a bit more than that. So we can say we have like i8. We have, and you can see with all these kind of uh, code completion, what that's telling me, we have i8, we have 64, 32, 16, 128. Not in that order in terms of size, but we have quite a variety so with i8, you would have eight bits of memory allocated to an integer. And because of the small size, you only get a certain amount of, uh, you only get a certain range with the number or the, the integer itself. And we can go ahead and see that. So if I did something like print line and we did i8 min, and we can do that and type in i8 colon colon and then min like so we can also do max as well as that so i8 min and i8 max and if i run this so back in main.rs i just need to import it so mod integer types and then in the main function integer types colon colon run and if i do cargo run now in the command line we see here i8 minimum is, so the smallest integer you can use with an i8 is minus 128, the largest 127. Anything beyond that or below that does not work. And we also have, as well as i8, we have the, a couple more. So instead of i8, let's do i32. Uh, I'm skipping i16, but we can see with i32, um, let me just comment the last ones out, run that. So we get a bit more, well, a lot more actually. So with I32 minus here and max being that. And you also have um, I128, so 128 bits for an integer. And that too is very large. And I don't think anyone would, I don't think there'd probably be a case where that is exceeded. Um, but we can go ahead and look, check on it anyway. It's usually quite fun because it is a huge number. Uh, so I128 and I128, so the min and the max. Now, if I run that, you'll see a huge number. And there we go. So the minimum for, oops, what have I done? Create a new command line. But yeah, the, the minimum is this, the maximum is this. I don't even know the name for such a number, but that's what you have with um, the i the i integers, basically. So the signed integers. And when I say signed, it's also because we, we it's also because we have unsigned integers. So like i8, we also have unsigned. And if I were to show you what that was like, we can do print line, uh, unsigned and then eight min and don't worry I'm not going to go through all the mins and maxes but with the unsigned ones you can't go below zero so it, they have to be positive numbers and we can do min like so if I run this now we have u8 min is zero the same would be for u16 32 64 uh, and so on uh, the U basically means unsigned and unsigned meaning it cannot be a negative value. So yeah, that's the spiel for uh, the kind of integer types that we have. Now let's go ahead and look at how we can turn some of these or make use of some functions. So let's go ahead and create something called multiply uh, both like so. And we'll take number one, and that will be i32. And let's do number two as being i32. 
and this will return actually let's do this as i16 and this will do this will return a 32 bit integer so you probably may have already guessed you can't multiply a 32 bit integer with a 16 bit integer the same is what we had with floats so if i did return number one multiplied by number two you, if you're using VS Code or you're using some editor that gives you this hinting, then you'll see under the squiggly line that uh, mismatch types expected i32 uh, found i16. And that's because you cannot multiply a 16-bit integer with a 32-bit one. But to kind of combat that, we can go ahead and convert our number two into a 32-bit. And we can say as i32, like so. So I'm just going to comment this, all this stuff out and let's run and multiply both. So multiply both and we'll pass in 10 and 20. Uh, and we also need to print that. So let's do let results equal print line and then results being result like so and if I run this now we get result being 200 so that's with like kind of casting integers um, the other thing to mention uh, is with with functions is that you don't have to ret uh, specify the return in semicolon in the last line as with rust the last expression in a function or in a Rust function is automatically used as the function's return. So instead of doing return number one times number two, we can remove the return and the semicolon. And if we were to run that now, so in the command line, if we did cargo run, we get the exact same as we had before, result equals 200. So that's something to keep in mind, like it's, it clears a lot of stuff out so you don't have to write the return value but that's basically it for integers we can also go ahead and try out with uh doing something with a unsigned value so if i did public function and also i don't need to specify public as these functions are only used inside this file so we can say um multiply unsigned integer like so and we'll say number is an unsigned integer of 32 and this will return a unsigned integer and what we can do is say number and I'm skipping out the return value as this is the last expression times four and we can go ahead and here it's complaining and that's because expected a U32 um, found that, ah, because of the semicolon, don't need the semicolon there. Um, and we can say print line uh, unsigned result and do, what did I call it? Multiply unsigned integer. If I pass in a four, we we'll get no complaints. If I run this, I get 16. But now if I were to pass in minus four, and let me just clear that, run it, we get this error, cannot apply unary operator minus. And that's because it's unsigned and minus four goes beyond the range of an unsigned integer. And also one last thing to know is with unsigned integers, um, you may be wondering, do we get more range with positive, positive not values? Um, and that is yes. So if I were to do, if we compare the max, the, the max here for, uh, I, uh, for 128 bit signed integer. And then if I were to use, um, if I say U128 max and then U128, we compare the values now. So I clear it and run. So with the uh, signed integer, we have this value, I don't know how to say it. And with the unsigned one, we have, it begins with a three. And you can tell based off that, 
that this unsigned integer is basically double the value for this plus one. Um, and uh, yeah, so you do get that extra range. It's because you don't have the minuses. You don't have to deal with minus values or negative values. So it kind of just piles on top of the positive uh, integers as well. But that's about it for integers. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.